Oz Yoshe Moshe is Hashira Hazos Lashem. Moshe Rabbeinu in Shemos chapter 15 captures a magic moment with a unique song. This isn't just one song among many, but this is the Shira of the whole Torah. This is the moment where Moshe Rabbeinu leads the Jewish people in a song of praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and all the events that had led up to it, all the slavery and the persecution and the ten plagues and the fleeing out of Egypt and the Seder night, and everything suddenly made sense. Suddenly they saw it, suddenly they got it, and this was the magic moment of Oz. And it's interesting that the whole parsha, the whole chapter 15, starts with that one word, Oz, Aleph Zayin, the uh, moment where Moshe Rabbeinu started his song. It could have simply said, Vayosha Moshe Zashir Hazos, that Moshe comp- so he compiled this song, that he made up this particular beautiful poem of 21 verses, of praise to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but it doesn't. It says Oz. And I'd like to have a look at this word Oz and give you two different ways of seeing it, both of which I think are very fascinating, take us a bit deeper into that moment in the history of Klal Yisrael. The first is really, I think, best understood by observing what appears to be a contradiction in the words of Rashi, something rather unusual in the commentary of Rashi on the Chumash of the whole Tanakh, we don't often find that Rashi in one place appears to contradict himself completely of something he said in another place. Rashi knew what he was writing. Rashi understood, had a total grasp of the whole Tanakh and the whole Torah. And his writing is all of one piece. Each part of it explains a different part of the Chumash, a part of the narrative, but here we have a very interesting example of Russia, a seeming contradiction. And I'd like to take you a bit deeper into that uh, observation. On the one hand, we have in Shemos chapter 14, it says, Vayugad leparo ki ha'om, ha'om, that the Paro found out that the Jewish people had in fact fled and were on their way uh, to the Yamsuf. And he decided to pursue them with a view of recapturing them and bringing them back uh, to Israel. On that passage, Rashi says that gives us a bit of a chronology that it was only on the third day that the Jewish people left Egypt that Paro found out about it. He then pursued them. It took him a couple of days. Anyhow, he found them on the sixth day. And on the seventh day of Pesach, took pla- the whole of the Kriyas Yams of the splitting of the, of the Red Sea took place. And Rashi there says, uncharacteristically, gives us a little bit of halacha. He says, and therefore, on the seventh day of Pesach, we read Oz Yosha. We read the Shiro, says Rashi, even though Rashi's commentary on the Chumash is not about giving us the details of halachic practice. Here he tells us, on the seventh day of Pesach, we read the Shiro. Why do we read it? Because that's when it happened. The actual Yetzirah's been trying to place on the Seder night, and then seven days later, took pla- the Shiro took place, and that's why we read it. Fine. Sounds like a very a reasonable and simple uh, piece of uh, uh, halachic data, which we practice every year, and Bez Hashem, indeed, we will do it this year again on the seventh day of Pesach. That's our reading from the Torah. And yet, if you look in Sefer Bamidbar, in Parsha Shalach Lecha, the very, very last Rashi of the whole Pasha of Shalach Lecha. The last topic in Shalach Lecha deals with the mitzvah of tzitzis. And in the final Rashi, he gives us a certain amount of symbolic reading of how the tzitzis work. Why do we have so many knots and so many threads? And one of the things he says is that we have eight threads on each corner of the talus, the tzitzis. Why, he says? Because it was on the eighth day of Pesach that the, we had uh, the splitting of the Red Sea, Kriyas Yamsuf, and we said the Shira. Seemingly exactly different to what he has said in, in Sefer Shemos chapter 14, that he was on the seventh day. So what was it, uh, Rabbi Sai? Was it the seventh day or was it the eighth day? Has Rashi got confused? And the answer is absolutely not. But there is a deeper meaning. Rashi wants us to think a little bit more deeply on this subject. 
And in resolving this particular apparent uh, seeming contradiction, I'm going al along the path of the Maharal Prague uh, in his commentary, Gur Arya. He wrote a whole series of books only explaining Rashi al Hatera. And he picks up this contradiction immediately, as anybody who is uh, an officiander, uh, who, who is uh, completely familiar with the uh, writings of Rashi, will notice straight away this contradiction. And he takes us into the following way of thinking, which I'll mention just very briefly. So he says, in actual fact, of course, it took place on the seventh day of Pesach. And on the seventh day of Pesach, we are laning uh, the Kriyas Yamsuf as part of our tefillah. And that is standard and that is normal. So what does he mean it was the eighth day? And here comes something very fascinating. And that is that actually the Torah never calls the Yontif Pesach. The name Pesach, we give the name Pesach to the, Yont to the Yontif. And indeed the Mishnah also gives the name Pesach to the Yontif, to the Chag, right? Arve Psachim, Samach Lamish. The Mishnah says, and in fact, the whole Masechta is called Psachim. But in actual fact, the Torah uses the word Pesach only to describe the Korban Pesach. And the Korban Pesach was uh, sacrificed on Erev Pesach, on the 14th. And in fact, the Pesach that we read uh, during the Kriya Torah on Pesach says, Barbosa Yom Lachodesh Pesach Lashem that the Pesach was on the 14th, not the 15th. The 15th is the Chag HaMatzos. That's the name the Torah gives to our Yontif. But the Pesach was on the 14th. What happened on the 14th? So here comes an interesting thing, that when they took the Korban Pesach, they, had, they hadn't been redeemed yet. They hadn't yet been Makas Bechoros. They hadn't yet uh, managed to become free from, from Egypt. But there was something very special that had taken place. At the moment they took the Korban Pesach, they were mentally and spiritually free of the, free of the Egyptians. By taking the Korban Pesach, that was the ultimate statement of divesting themselves of all, any contact they had with the Egyptian culture, with the Egyptian people, with the Egyptian beliefs. This was a total moment of intellectual and spiritual freedom. That happened on the 14th. And then on the 15th, that was the moment of physical freedom, that they were actually able to leave Egypt on, on their way into the Midbar, to Sinai, and eventually to the land of Israel. But these happened in two stages. First, there was the spiritual freedom, and then there was the actual freedom from slavery, me'avdus lecheirus. But the moment on the 14th, when they, when they shechted, and they slaughtered the Korban Pesach, that was a crucial spiritual, personal moment of freedom, even while they were still enslaved to the Egyptians and hadn't yet broken free. So what we have here is something very, very interesting, that actually the seventh day of Pesach is also the seventh day, if you count from the physical freedom, and it's also the eighth day, if you count from the spiritual freedom of the Korban Pesach, which took place on Erev Pesach, and therefore Rashi is absolutely correct. He's not contradicting himself. In one sense, it's the seventh day. In terms of the physical world, it's the seventh day. In terms of the spiritual freedom of the Jewish people, it was in fact uh, the eighth day. And what's interesting is now, if you'd like, and this the Maral doesn't say, but I'd like just to add this on top of his parish, that this could be the, another meaning of the word Oz Yosheh Moshe. That Oz Yosheh Moshe is taking place indeed on the seventh day, but it's Oz. Oz is written Aleph Zion. Aleph Zion means, Zion means it's the seventh day. But Aleph Zion means there was something that preceded the seventh day, and that was the Aleph. The Aleph refers to the Hashem Echad, the moment of Yichud Hashem that was recognized and expressed by the Jewish people when they shecht to the Kom Pesach on the 14th. So in actual fact, it was Oz Yosheh Moshe. That was a day which was both the 7th and the 8th. It was the 8th day in the sense that it, the Jewish people came to this elevated recognition and realization um, of the Yichud Hashem. But indeed, in terms of the physical redemption of Me'avdus L'Chairus, it was the 7th day. 
And that's the first parish I want to mention to you about the word Oz. The second parish, I think, simply takes us into the experiential side of what was going on there. And something which the Torah does focus on in several different places. And that is that the truth of our emunah, the truth of the hand of our Kodesh Baruch Hu, that guides and protects the world, and particularly that guides and protects the history of Klal Yisrael, is something which is only occasionally evident to us. We generally live in a world of habits and of physical uh, 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 anxieties and challenges and engagements with the world, and every now and again, we get an inspired moment where we suddenly can see the truth. For those people familiar with the writings of the Rambam, you will know that in the introduction to the Mori Nebuchim, the Mori Nebuchim was the Rambam's philosophical and theological magnum opus, was one of the most complicated works of Jewish philosophy ever written. And in the introduction to it, he says, let me tell you something about the complexities of theology and philosophy at the highest level. He says, really, most of the time we're going round in circles and we don't really see the truth. But he says every now and again, we get what he calls is a flash of lightning. And he says, why do I say a flash of lightning? Because our journey philosophically in life can be compared to a person who is traveling in the dark, and he can't see where he's going. And every now and again, there's a flash of lightning. And in that flash, he can see where he is, he can see his surroundings, he can see where he's going to, and what he has to do is take a snapshot in his mind of the lit up world in that flash of lightning, and to use that as a map to, to guide him until he gets the next flash of lightning. Because there are some people like Moshe Rabbeinu who lived in a world of constant flashes of lightning 24-7. He lived in a world of intellectual and spiritual clarity. Aspaklaria hameira, the Chazal call it, the total clarity of all spiritual and philosophical truths and the presence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But most of us live in the darkness of habits and engagements and and uh, anxieties of various sorts. But every now and again, we get that flash of lightning. The genius of Moshe Rabbeinu in B'Shalach chapter fifteen uh, is that he's able to capture that flash of lightning in the most beautiful shiro. The shiro expresses a peak moment of our emunah, that was the highest level of emunah was shared by every man and woman in Kalal Yisrael. And that was then captured in the shiro, and that was the Oz. Oz grasps the the idea that it was a moment. Oz means at that moment, they saw with total crystal clarity. They saw the Yad Hashem. It was only Oz. A moment later, it had gone. But Moshe Rabbeinu did us this taiva. He captured his, that snapshot of clarity in the Shira. And by giving us the Shira, he gives us the opportunity every year to re-engage with that moment of, of Emunah, that peak moment of Ruchnius, which Klal Yisrael experienced at that moment, and which we say every single day of our lives to connect Kriya Shema to Shemona Esra, we say, Shiro Chadasha Shibchu Geulim Le Shimcha Al Svasayom. This Shiro Chadasha was the absolute uh, highest level of Emunah, the lightning of the Rambam, the inspiration that we all look for. That happens in moments. But those moments are precious moments, and we need to preserve them, we need to replay them in our mind, and we need to keep that snapshot in our mind until the next moment of lightning, in order to guide us in a life of emunah and chesed and mitzvahs, a life of avodah Hashem, until eventually we will be able to shir chodosh al gula seinu al padus nafshenu. The hope of the tefillah of Pesach is that this redemption will repeat itself ultimately for the whole of Klal Yisrael. Amen.